The United States is in the midst of the most protracted period of political violence since the late 60s and early 70s. But the violence now is much different, and the perpetrators are much different. Could the defendant please state his name? Anderson Lee Aldridge was a 22-year-old who went into a gay nightclub on November 19th, 2022, and opened fire, killing five people and wounding more than a dozen others. Anderson represents a new form of right-wing extremism. Historically, what we saw mainly was that people were radicalized either by joining groups, so militia movement or the militant civil rights groups of the late 60s and early 70s, or that you had these sort of lone wolf radicals who were motivated by a single issue, such as opposition to technology in the case of the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski. What we see today is more of kind of a grab bag radical uh, responsible for these fatal incidents of political violence. Anderson combined different elements that he absorbed online of cartoons, uh, memes, uh, videos. Uh, Anderson was without a clear, coherent ideology. Rather, Anderson latched onto uh, these hateful tropes and combined them and then went and targeted this gay nightclub in Colorado Springs. So we see people who are going on the internet and self-radicalizing and they're taking advantage of sort of the fractured political discourse and the availability of extremist material online. And they're sort of building their own extremist ideologies to fit whatever personal set of grievances they may have. So they may draw from elements of white supremacist ideology or anti-Semitic or QAnon theory or anti-LGBT and they will put these things together and form their own sort of justification for violence. USA! 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 We've identified at least 230 incidents of political violence in this country since the January 6, 2021 riots at the U.S. Capitol. We've seen that violence from across the political spectrum. We found nearly two dozen cases of fatal political violence, resulting in 44 deaths. To get a better understanding of how these politically inspired killers become radicalized, we examined 14 of them in depth, looking at their social media histories, their internet posts, interviewing friends and families. All of these people were on the political right. None of them belonged to an extremist group. They all radicalized on their own. Anderson didn't work, lived with their mother, and Anderson existed, at least in part, in an online world of the gaming community. In Discord, uh, where Anderson chatted with friends who he played games with and coded with, they engaged in what they consider to be politically incorrect talk, cancel culture, sharing cartoon images called memes with sarcastic jokes that could be cruel or offensive that some might say was racist or anti-Semitic or sexist. But in their minds, they were just mocking uh, what was considered politically correct. The summer before carrying out the Club Q shooting, Anderson created a website that he that Anderson said was meant to uh, celebrate free speech and that site was filled with far-right imagery cruel cartoons of Pepe the Frog um, stabbing African Americans uh, pictures with slurs advocating the deaths of Jews and the LBGTQ community it was a deeply disturbing sight when Anderson carried out the attack on Club Q Anderson's friends on discord were left shocked because they didn't understand how this could happen. They didn't understand that Anderson could take what they saw as jokes and sarcasm and act in a way that was brutal and that would hurt people till this day. To those 46 counts of attempted murder in the first degree, how do you plead? Guilty. Anderson Aldridge struggled with mental health issues, and Anderson was not alone in this within the, uh, the cases that Reuters has looked at for the story of people committing acts of political violence. What experts say is that while mental health issues do come up with some people carrying out deadly attacks, um, that alone is not the driver. 
We spoke with dozens of law enforcement officials and academics who study political violence, and one thing that we heard again and again was that the mainstreaming of violent rhetoric and of sort of conspiratorial political ideologies has played a big role in this spike in violence that we're seeing lately. And that includes public officials, members of Congress, even former President Trump, who has espoused a variety of political conspiracy theories over the years, beginning with the theory that President Obama was not born in the United States. You also couple that with the world of the internet and the way that people explore the world online and come across different hateful and incendiary ideas. Together, these factors have led to this uptick in political violence that we are seeing.